What's up guys and welcome to One Take. Today we're talking about Dark Season 3, Episode 1. There will be spoilers, of course, through Episode 1, but we haven't watched beyond that, so no spoilers for any more of Season 3 beyond that. I'm Gil, talking to my tech guy slash brother Alun. Yo. And quick reminder to hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up with our coverage of Dark. So normally we would do this sort of thing live, but because I'm assuming a lot of people have probably already binged all of season three we're gonna do this pre-recorded but we'll definitely do a live stream after we finish the season to talk about our thoughts for the season as a whole first overall thoughts on the episode i'm always worried when a show i love is coming back for a new season especially like this when you're talking about a final season but i thought this lived up generally to the quality of dark seasons one and two i thought they did a great job of recapturing the sense of discovery where in the first couple of seasons every time a character for the first time stumbles into their time travel journey you get that excitement you get that interesting discovery of going back in time and figuring out oh who does this person grow up to be oh that's a young claudia it's all making sense here they've done the time travel thing so many times but they've introduced this new element of traveling to another world and for me that brought back the sense of discovery also need to say that Jonas, played by Lewis Hoffman, great actor, so good at just looking confused, overwhelmed, and sad all at once. Something he has to do a lot of in this episode. So overall, I thought this was a solid episode. Can't wait to see where it goes in the final seven. Alon, any overall thoughts before we jump into the episode scene by scene? Overall, I agree with you. I think uh, what's kind of funny is just constantly watching to see what's the what's the next difference we're going to see from the other world that we've seen in season right. one katarina and wears glasses in this world yeah. and if you like i'm sure you've noticed most people just their hair is a little bit different usually right. a little bit longer yeah bar <laughs> chocha has longer hair and anyway the so let's jump right into the episode it starts out with this person who in the credits is listed just as unknown so that's the guy with the scarred lip we see him the three the trio where it's him as a child middle-aged man and an older man burning down what looks like adam's sigmundus lair and i'm assuming this takes place in our world especially because it looks exactly like adam's lair from the previous season and we see photos of jonas who doesn't appear to exist in the other world then we cut to Jonas and Marta at the end of season two, where Jonas sees his dead Marta lying on the floor. And then this other Marta shows up. She transports him to the cave in the other world. And then she tells him, today's the day it all began, the day we first met. Jonas asks, what's that supposed to mean? And she says, your world and my world form a knot that is inextricably intertwined and then it gives him basically no information no instruction no other information before she disappears we find out that today is november 4th 2019 that is the night that in our world that mikhail disappeared and went back in time so in this other world we learn a little bit about it throughout the episode it's not yet clear to me if this is back to the future 2 style where this other world was created by someone intervening in the past for example did somebody go back in time successfully stop mikel from disappearing and that branched off to create this other reality and you would think well if they stopped mikel from disappearing that would only change things from that point forward but Mikkel's disappearance set off a whole domino effect of time travel, so it would have a ripple effect that alters the world's past, present, and future. So I don't know if that's what we're seeing here, or if this is a case of there is a multiverse, this other world already existed, this world without Jonas, and somehow these two separate worlds have now become intertwined. I don't know if we'll get a solid answer to that. My guess is it's going to be complicated. That one way or another, these two worlds created each other. Schrodinger's cat. There's no answer exactly to which one came first. But we'll see. So Marta wakes up Jonas style. And right off the bat, we start to see some of those differences. Marta, Katarina, her family are in the house that in our world was Jonas's house but here it is the Nielsen's home 
And uh, Mikel's older, so at first we assumed, <laughs> oh, how are they going to uh, explain that one? Because the actor has obviously aged. And then we find out that that is part of the show. They make a comment later that indicates Mikel's older than we're used to. We see that Magnus and Francisca are together already. In the original version of this world, the two of them entered a relationship after Mikel disappeared. So here, they're already together. And then Kat Katarina mentions that tomorrow, the kids have to go to their dad's place. We see that Ulrich has been cut out of the family photo. So here, Ulrich is not cheating on his wife, but he actually left her for Hannah. Was that a good idea? I don't know. Probably uh, Ulrich seems to be somewhat of a self-destructive person, I think. <laughs> So we see that Hannah is with Ulrich, and Hannah is pregnant. So in our world, Hannah gave birth to Mikkel, or gave birth with Mikkel. <laughs> in this world, she's pregnant with Ulrich. So well, she has now become pregnant with the grandfather of the, I don't know, this whole confusing thing. Yeah, but now you said she's pregnant with Ulrich. Well, <laughs> her and Ulrich together <laughs> yeah. are now pregnant. So she is pregnant with the father of of the person she was originally pregnant with. Yeah, well, with. you never know in this show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure. So that's a question. Who is she? Who is the child that is currently in her womb? <laughs> in this world, you know it's got to be somebody unexpected. Could it be a different version of Jonas? That wouldn't really make sense. I don't know how sense. that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's someone interesting, though. But Hannah says, I love you, and Ulrich says... You're beautiful. Exactly. So he still <laughs> is not reciprocating the emotional part of their relationship. Later, she finds a hair on Ulrich's sweatshirt and begins to suspect an affair. And in this world, Ulrich is having an affair with Charlotte. Hannah goes to school to see Katarina and basically tells her that she's going to stay out of the way. She realizes that Ulrich's family, his children, are part of his life. She's not going to interfere. And then she asks Katarina, Ulrich said he was going to drop something off. Has he dropped it off? Katarina says he hasn't. So Ulrich telling Hannah he needs to pr drop something off is probably just part of the lies he's spinning to cover up for his affair, I'm assuming. We see Marta riding her bike, Jonas style. She sees the nuclear plant and she meets up. Oh, and she also sees the missing persons poster for Eric Obendorf. So that's one of the similarities between these worlds. In this world, also, Eric is missing. Marta meets up with Magnus and Bartosz at school. We see that Marta is dating a guy named Killian, and that's Eric's brother. So Eric has a brother here. And part of me hates him right off the bat because it feels like he's taking Marta <laughs> away from Jonas, even though Jonas appears to not exist in this world. I also, uh, what do you think of Bartosz's new look here? The longer <laughs> hair? Yeah, well, it feels like he's dressing even more rich than he did in the first right, the, the um, seasons. The uh, scarf. The scarf. Yeah. Wearing a scarf indoors. Very classy look. Yeah. In the first two seasons, he always wore the, the popped up collar or uh, pol polo. That's right. So he's yeah. taken his um, preppy look to the next level. Yeah. I think it works for him. He looks like yeah. pretty classy. <laughs> so at the Doppler home, we see Helga, who in our, wor our world had the damaged ear, the side of his face. Here, his eye is missing, his, and that half of his face is damaged. But he still has the similar ramblings. It will happen again. Tick tock. Peter is there, and Charlotte shows up. She's so good at always looking super preoccupied. Peter asks her how to go to the doctors. She says it was just a routine checkup. I'm assuming, again, that was a lie. She was with Ulrich. I'm assuming this is all part of their shenanigans. Then let's check in on Jonas and look, follow his journey throughout this episode. So Jonas goes to what should be his home, but like we said, is now actually the Nielsen's home where Katarina lives with her children, Magnus, Marta, and Mikkel. He sees the photo of Katarina with her family on the wall, so he's starting to learn that things are a little bit different here. And then he goes up to what should be Michael Conwald's studio, where he hung himself and sees a picture of Marta with Bartosz and Killian. Then doesn't really know what to do, so he just walks into Marta's class <laughs> while it's going, interrupts, <laughs> and uh, joins the class. Bartosz is teaching the class about black holes, wormholes. This is something that in the first episode of the series, we saw Francisca doing. 
So another one of those little differences where characters are taking on different roles. By the way, this is something that I wish we talked about in school. I definitely, I paid a lot of attention in class. It always took a lot of effort, though. <laughs> if we were talking about black holes and wormholes and all that, definitely would have paid more attention. Jonas shows up to the class. He seems to have let go of any worries about shame or embarrassment, like we said. So he just walks in, sits down. Really nice touch there, by the way, where he's sitting in class looking at Marta and then looks down at the blood on his hands. He still has his Marta's blood on his hands. He tries to talk to Marta after class. She doesn't know him. So, again, I need to say Lisa Vicari, who plays Marta, great acting. She needs to switch from last season where she's in love with this character to now being a little bit scared of him, not knowing who he is. He really doesn't know what to say, but from that conversation learns that this Marta has no idea who he is. Then freaking Killian shows up <laughs> and separates the two of them, breaks up the conversation. <laughs> Jonas talks to the teacher and finds out today is November 4th, 2019, the night Mikel disappeared. Then he bumps into Hannah, his mother, freaks out a little bit and finds out that she has no idea who he is. She asks if she can help this confused child. He doesn't know what to say. He kind of just shakes his head. Then Jonas goes to the cemetery. He sees Regina Tiedemann's grave. And then Peter shows up. He seems to be a pastor or a priest and asks Jonas if he needs help. Jonas says he's looking for Michael Conwald. Peter says, we've got nobody named Michael Conwald here. All we have is a Daniel called Conwald, someone who died in 1964. At the police station, which, by the way, I love that the subtitles feel the need when it says police to tell me that that means police. And I want to tell the subtitles that by season three, I've worked out that police in German <laughs> means police. They're discussing Eric Obendorf's disappearance. We get a close-up shot of Torben Wohler's face, and he's got his eye back. Yeah. Uh, but it turns out he's missing an arm. Now, I find it kind of odd and kind of funny the way they play with uh, disabilities in this show, where it's Elizabeth was deaf in our world, but in this world, Francisca is deaf. Helga, instead of a damaged ear, he has a damaged eye. Peter, instead of a missing eye, has a missing arm. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I wonder if it's the sort of thing that might rub people the wrong, the wrong way. Because logistically, I just can't see of a reason why. What changed in this world genetically? So the two children end up exactly the same as in our world, except they swapped which one of them is deaf, for example. But anyway, I just feel bad for Torben. It seems like he cannot escape this fate to just be physically scarred in some way. And it also seems like whatever happened to make him lose his eye and in this world his arm seems to be an embarrassing incident. Because if you remember last season when Clausen asked how he lost his eye, he says, OK, but you can't tell anyone. <laughs> and then, of course, they had to swerve to avoid Claudia. And we never learned what caused it. So I just feel bad for Torben. <laughs> anyway, Charlotte is sent to go check in on Tiedemann at the nuclear plant. And when they said she needs to speak to Tiedemann, it was funny that they didn't go out. They went out of their way not to mention it was Alexander Tiedemann. So my mind started racing. Which Tiedemann is she going to see? Is it Claudia, for example? But no, it is Alexander Tiedemann, but with facial hair. And as soon as he showed up, I commented how everybody in this world looks miserable. And here we find out quickly Alexander has good reason to be sad. His wife, Regina, has already passed due to cancer. And it, throughout the episode, I noticed that things are happening earlier in this world than they did in our world. For example, Mikel must have been born earlier because he's older. Magnus and Francisca are in a relationship already. In our world, that took longer. Regina's cancer seems to have hit sooner. So I wonder if there's something to that, if it'll be addressed for one reason or another, major events in this world are happening sooner than in our world, or if it's just coincidental. The worlds are very similar in many ways, and many similar events have occurred, but just coincidentally, they happen to have occurred earlier in this world. Anyway, Charlotte requests the employee schedule, the shift schedule, at the nuclear plant from Alexander Tiedemann, 
because they want to cross reference that with all the tire tracks they found on the forest road of why forest why not forest road fame if you remember egon investigating that way back mm. when the forest road is where eric Obendorf was last seen so they want to know who was driving there so alexander says i'll get her the schedule and she asks if it's possible eric could have gotten onto plant grounds through the cave Alexander says, impossible, it's all sealed off down there, just like it is in our world. And then he asks, well, Charlotte asks Alexander how he's holding up, and he's getting by. She's asking, of course, about uh, his wife, Regina, passing away. Ulrich and Charlotte meet up in the evidence room, just like Ulrich did with Hannah in our world. And then uh, Torben butts in and sees the two of them, clearly in an intimate situation. And I love what happens here. Torben tells Ulrich he checked the tire treads. They found 42 cars and two trucks. There are more than 21,000 vehicles registered in Winden. And and Ulrich just asks, what do you want me to do with that information? (laughs) And then Charlotte says that she got the shift schedules from the power plant so she can run a comparison between them. Alexander Tiedemann then visits Jurgen or Jurgen, that's Oric Oben, Eric Obendorf's father, pays him off, and he's asking Jurgen to basically move the barrels temporarily from underground to somewhere else to hide them because the cops are starting to sniff around. This happened in the previous season as well in our world, except in our world, Alexander was working with Torben. And Torben was working with his sibling, the prostitute by the truck stop, and they moved the barrels there. Jonas goes to see Marta's play rehearsal, where again, she gives that monologue about how knots cannot be undone, but they can be severed. And then right in front of Jonas, she kisses Eric's older brother, Killian. How could she? <laughs> Jonas tries to talk of talk to her afterwards, and she's getting sick of this. This is the second time that he's approached her. This stranger with the next car has approached her. She tells him to F off after he asks about Michael Conwald. He asks about, um, and, she, and he learns that uh, Marta's father is uh, Ulrich, and, um, or Marta, or Hannah is married to Ulrich. <laughs> It's hard to keep it straight between the two different worlds and all the different timelines. So Jonas is starting to learn a little bit about this other world. Magnus goes to the Doppler family bunker with Francisca. They start to get intimate. While they were down there, I really expected the portal to open up. Open up. This is where the portal opened in front of Peter Doppler and Mad's body popped out. That doesn't happen yet, but this is where we learn that Francisca is deaf in this world unlike her sister Elizabeth, who in the next scene we learn she can speak. And she speaks to her grandfather, Helga, who is continuing to ramble about how it will happen again. The beginning is the end. Tick tock. Then flashback to September 21st, 1987. And unlike most of the rest of the episode, I believe this scene takes place in our world. Because the previous time we saw the trio... They were burning down the Sigmundus HQ. So we're seeing them, I'm assuming, in our world. They go to the Doppler family mansion. So that's Helga's father, Burned Doppler, the power plant uh, director before Claudia. So the child version of the Lipscard man shows up, super creepy kid, just keeps staring at Burned, says he wants the master key to the nuclear power plant. Burned goes to call the cops. And by the way, if you paid attention to the numbers he hit on the phone, in Germany, it's not 911, it's 110. Uh. Just a fun fact in case you're ever in Germany and a creepy child that tries to kill you. The kid also grabs an apple in the scene, which a lot of Adam and Eve imagery, so I think that's part of the, the apple there. And then, of course, who else is always eating apples? Noah. And he never seems to finish them. He always eats them. <laughs> Someone shows up and he throws away whatever's <laughs> left of it. So the kid shows up, the guy, Burns Doppler, goes to call the cops until the older version of this kid and the older, older version of the kid walks in, middle-aged version, chokes out Burned Doppler and kills him. Marta goes to the woods just like she did in our world the night of Mikkel's disappearance. But tonight, her and her friends are not looking for drugs. They're looking for clues about Killian's brother, Eric's disappearance. 
And just like in our world, she gets there before everybody else. And our Jonas, bold, by the way, for the third time today, <laughs> approaches Marta. He tells her we know each other in another time. She doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. And then he tells her, you've seen this all, you've seen this all before. You have a feeling of deja vu, a glitch in the matrix. And it seems to work on her. She does have some sense of recognition. She starts to get a little bit emotional. And then again, Killian shows up with Magnus, Francisca, and Bartosz. They break the whole thing up. Jonas still thinks that Mikkel was going to show up this night. And he thought, maybe I'm here to stop Mikkel from going back in time. But this is where Magnus says, Mikkel's old enough to look after himself. So again, Mikkel's older. He's not here. So Jonas doesn't know what to do. He runs off and leaves his friends who go to the cave. And just like in our world, loud noise, flickering lights, they run away. Marta trips, gets left behind. And just like in our world where Jonas heard somebody say his name, somebody whisper, and then he sees an image of his father covered in some kind of a dark substance, here, same thing happens to Marta. She's lost in the woods, alone, someone says her name, and then she sees an older woman covered in some kind of a dark substance. I don't know who she's seeing here. It was hard to tell. It's also weird because when Jonas saw his father covered in, I don't know if it's blood or something else, and then he sees his father again later when he's older Jonas in the cave at the end of season one, sees his father there with him. I assumed it's a hallucination, but it's kind of weird if Marta is also having some kind of a hallucination. But maybe it's just a side effect of the time travel radiation or something. But we'll see if it, if it gets addressed. And then Marta runs and Killian shows up, takes her hand and rescues her. Her and her friends run to the bunker. While they're down there, this is where the portal opens up. A body, a child's body falls out, and they see that it is Mads Nielsen. In our world, Peter found the body, then called Trant, and older Claudia showed up to guide them. So I'm wondering if the same thing will happen here. Will older Claudia or somebody else show up to guide them through what happens next? Jonas goes back to his home, not knowing where else to go, and is then approached by an older woman, who is older Marta. And she finally gives him some answers. You're in a world where Mikkel didn't travel back in time, meaning you don't exist, but the world also ends here because of you, which I thought was pretty harsh, but then she adds, and me. So somehow the two of them trigger the apocalypse. And then we go way back in time to September 21st, 1888, a time period we haven't seen yet. And I'm again assuming this is now our world because we see an older Jonas here and he doesn't appear to exist in this other world. So younger time traveling Marta that we saw at the beginning of the episode visits Townhouse. H.G. Townhouse, the guy who owns the clockmaker shop and built the time machine. Inside, she finds a middle-aged Jonas, and he seems to be experimenting on what I assume is going to eventually be a time machine. He's very happy, very shocked to see that Marta is alive until she tells him, I'm not your Marta. He doesn't really understand what any of that means, and then she says, I'm here to help you find the origin, the one thing that's the beginning of everything in your world and in mine. So this older Jonas has the next scar. So we assume he is our Jonas. And this is our world. We don't really know a lot about what Jonas has been up to all this time. We see him as a younger person. Then we see him 33 years later as a middle-aged Jonas. And then we see him as an older man as Adam. So I'm assuming we're getting a little bit of a glimpse into what Jonas has been up to all this time. And it seems like, for some reason, he's been in the late 1800s building maybe a time machine. Or maybe he's building something that allows for travel between worlds. Who knows? I guess a lot of people know if they've already binged <laughs> the full season. Uh, I have a theory here. So he's in a place that says Townhouse on the front. Does older Jonas take on the name Townhouse? and eventually give birth to H.G. Townhouse. Maybe. 
Now, I don't really know the implications of that for the overall family tree because Charlotte says that H.G. Townhouse is her grandfather, but not her biological grandfather. So it's not like if Jonas is H.G. Downhouse's father, that means he's Charlotte's grandfather or anything like that, or great-grandfather. So that is where we reach the end of the episode. Like I said, I thought this was a really solid premiere for season three. I'm very happy to see that the show has been able to maintain this quality going into its final season. Bummed that the show is ending, but glad that it's going to end. It looks like it's going to end strong and on its own terms. Alon, any other thoughts on the episode? Anything I didn't touch on that you wanted to bring up before we wrap up? Uh, overall, I, I enjoyed the episode. I am happy with the quality. Uh, I do think it's weird that Jonas still reacts to all this weird stuff as if he hasn't already seen a lot of weird stuff. Right. It's just kind of funny. He just walks right up to Marta and is confused over and over and over. Right. He should basically no longer ever be dumbstruck. Especially because the, you know, Marta from the other world already explained the situation to him. You're in, you're, you're in another world now. And it's, you know, he understands time travel. He should be able to put the pieces together pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, this version of the other world, Marta, is not the version that he saw. Right, right. Anyways. <laughs> well, you have to understand that most people aren't as emotionally put together as you are. So for Jonas, <laughs> seeing his mother not have any idea who he is, it's going to baffle him and probably, you know, emotionally affect him. So he might stand there with a dumb look on his face, for example. Fair enough. (laughs) So with that, I think we can wrap up. I'm not 100% sure how we're going to cover the rest of the season. At a minimum, we'll for sure do a live stream once we finish the season and go through the whole thing, talk about our theories. We'll probably probably do some other videos, breaking down theories about how it all ended. Uh, But maybe if there's a particular episode that's particularly crazy, we'll talk about that one. At a minimum, you'll get the full season capper and maybe you'll get something in between as well but with that i'll just say if you enjoyed this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and of course the bell icon so you get notified the next time we go live or the next time we do a video thanks for watching and see you on the next one take